If you want to know how to grow tons of tomatoes in tiny spaces, this is the video for you. Here are the seven tips that I've used to grow delicious and absolutely luscious tomatoes in my tiny two by four raised bed. Tip number one, is pick different varieties of tomatoes. I pick a combination of determinate and indeterminate tomatoes that grow early or late in the season. This allows me to have different varieties producing all season long. What are determinate tomatoes? Determinate tomatoes reach their final height, set all the tomato fruits at once, and then stop producing more fruit. This allows you to have a huge production of tomatoes all at one time. This is important for people who are looking to grow tomatoes for sauces and for canning. Now, indeterminate tomatoes keep growing all through the season, but they keep growing longer through the season. So these are plants that can grow from seven to eight feet in height. I also love to succession plant my tomatoes that allows me to even extend my season a little bit longer. And this year, I'm growing the following varieties. This is the Sun Gold. This is the Super Sweet 100. There's more here. This is the Husky Red Tomato. This is the Juliet Hybrid Grape Tomato. This is the Better Bush Determinate Tomato. Tip number two is use the lower and lean method for growing indeterminate tomatoes. One of the key reasons that I've found huge success growing tomatoes in my tiny space is because of this method. You can also use a container to grow indeterminate tomatoes using this method if you have a fence or a wall right next to the container. I would recommend using this lower and lean method rather than going with a tomato trellis or those tomato cages. What I have seen happens with the tomato cage, especially those smaller ones that they sell in the market, these indeterminate tomatoes just keep flopping and creating a huge mess. And it turns out to be not a great use of space. And these tomatoes also end up being affected with a lot more diseases because they are getting crowded in a tiny space. In my case, I'm using these stoma hooks, which are basically long hooks that have this white thread wrapped around them. Now, I don't have a lot of space to use these toma hooks because my entire back fence is filled with roses. But I wanted to be able to use the space in between the vegetable planter and the fence to be able to grow these tomatoes. And so I planted the tomatoes right at the edge of the vegetable planter and then I tied the tomahawk onto the fence. It led to the tomatoes growing diagonally on over the fence and as the tomato keeps getting longer I just keep lowering the entire stem. I have also found that this helps the tomatoes with better air circulation because as the tomatoes start growing on this trellis I start removing all of the leaves on the bottom of the tomato. Now if you don't have a back fence and you your planter is sitting in the middle of your garden, then you can create a vertical trellis on top of your tomato, which is about six to seven feet high. And from that trellis, you can suspend these tomahawks right down to the tomato and help the tomato grow vertically. This also will give you the same effect of having less diseases and better production of tomatoes in a small space. Next tip is watering the tomatoes. I have set up an irrigation system for my raised beds that not only helps me water the raised beds consistently, but it also helps me reduce any water wastage, especially here in California where we were going through drought for so many years. It also helps take off one more chore off of my list with the possibility that I would forget it when life gets too crazy. The part that I love about the irrigation system is that it waters the tomato directly at the base of the plant. If I was watering by hand, there was a possibility that I would splash over the leaves, creating a higher probability of the tomato getting powdery mildew. But because the irrigation system waters the tomato directly at the base, I have found that my tomatoes get infected with very few diseases. 
And as you can see, I have removed all of the leaves on the base of the plant, which again helps with the air circulation, which in turn helps reducing diseases like powdery mildew on the tomatoes. The next tip is to plant companion plants around the tomato. This is another key tip on having healthy tomatoes that are growing organically with minimal sprays. I planted marigolds this year next to the tomatoes and they have just worked wonders with the tomatoes. Towards the end of the season, the snails have completely devoured the marigolds, so maybe I need to replace them. But during most of the season, they did so well because the marigolds were just flourishing and reducing all the other pests or diseases off of the tomatoes. And as of now, I have not seen a single hornworm on my tomato this year. Some more plants that can help you not only reduce the pests, but also improve the flavor of the tomatoes are alyssum, basil, oregano, and peppers. Next tip is to use tomato clips while you're training the tomatoes on your vertical trellis. These Tiny tomato clips help hold the tomato stems without actually harming them or injuring them and give them enough room to grow right as they keep growing on the strings of the tomahawk trellis. Now, you do not need these tomato clips. You could also use a jute thread and just tie the tomato as it grows up or just twist the thread along the tomato as it grows up. What I have found is that you might end up damaging the main stem itself or the fruits. And one day I didn't have the hooks on me and I was like, oh, I'll just twist the thread around it. I ended up breaking an entire cluster of blooms on the tomatoes. <laughs> I was so sad about it. So I found that whenever I use these clips, there is minimum damage to the plant. The next tip is pruning your tomatoes. Now this is a little bit of a controversial topic because people have a little bit mixed advice across the board in what works for them. I have very simple advice for you. If you're growing indeterminate tomatoes, prune them. If you're growing determinate tomatoes, leave them alone. Do not prune the suckers. Let the plant grow into this bushy tomato that will maximize your yield of tomatoes. If you are growing indeterminate tomatoes, prune the suckers that grow along the stem because then your plant can just focus all its energies on growing that one stem and the tomatoes off of that stem. I have seen people create huge trellises off of the tomatoes with indeterminate tomatoes. And if that is something that you're into, then you can leave the suckers as they are because that will just end up filling the whole trellis. But if you're growing it in a tiny space, in a planter or in a small raised bed like I am growing mine, I would definitely recommend growing it as just one stem pruning off all the other suckers. I also reduce about 30% of the leaves, especially towards the bottom of the plant as those are the leaves that are going to be the first to be diseased. And as I mentioned earlier, this helps not only increasing the airflow in the plants, but it also decreases the diseases. My tip to reduce any diseases so that you don't have to spray the tomatoes with extra pesticides, even though they are organic pesticides, is to just have a good airflow around the plant. Don't plant the tomatoes too close to each other and remove any leaves as soon as you spot any issues with it. If you're growing your tomatoes in a hot climate, be cautious though with pruning off too many of your leaves because the leaves also provide shelter to the tomatoes. And if the climate around you is too hot and you're not using a shade cloth, I would recommend leaving the leaves on top of the tomato clusters. That would help you reduce any of the sun scald on your tomatoes. When you're watering the tomatoes, I would recommend watering early in the morning so that the water has enough time to dry over the rest of the day. Try not to water the tomato plants towards the end of the day because that again will keep the leaves moist, increasing chances of diseases on the tomatoes. If this is your first time growing any vegetables and you want to know how I have best grown vegetables as a beginner vegetable gardener myself, check out this video right here.